Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And today, we're going to have so much fun talking about a subject that I am very passionate about. And we're going to be talking about women as leaders, as speakers, you know, how, how women really are poised to do absolutely fantastic, fabulous things. But men, don't go away because we know that you all have those wonderful women in your lives, either coworkers, spouses, children. Um, you know, so, so this is it's just as important for you to be hearing this information too. So please join me in welcoming Mark Granger to our program today. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Deb. It's so great to be here. I really appreciate you having me on the show. Great, great. Well, let me tell people a little bit about you and then we will dive into this. So Mark Granger is the co-founder of Big Impact HQ, providing more income, impact, and influence for women experts who love to speak. Their Speak Your Path to Cash system has helped their clients generate over $51 million in revenue for their own businesses, while also being asked to speak on some of the world's most coveted stages, including Tony Robbins, Good Morning America, TEDx Talks, and that little program called The View. So again, Mark, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great. Well, you know, I always love hearing about how our guests got to where they are today and how you discovered that this is your passion in life and especially working with women. I just, I think this is going to be fascinating. So tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, the biggest thing I think is important is that as a co-founder, really, it's my wife and I that uh, come together to really create a beautiful, magical flow of the, of the masculine and the feminine in mm -hmm. service of women stepping into who they really are called to be, the messenger, the leader that allows them to put their message out into the world and to create a movement. Mm -hmm. Right now, we see that the world uh, is in massive transit, in massive transition. And so for women to be able to have, one, the skill set, the courage, and, and the understanding of what it means to step fully into their leader and to have the communication skills, the influence skills, the speaking skills to make a difference on the planet is really what our passion and our purpose is. So for me, I was raised, uh, I was raised with a father very much in touch with his heart and his emotions, mm -hmm. what I would consider the evolved masculine, mm -hmm. um, you know, decades before mm -hmm. that was even a concept. Right. And my mom, uh, my mom, she was a little bit more of a tor tortured soul, someone who I think really had a hard time um, with, with uh, the, the power that men sometimes uh, put on women. Mm -hmm. And so I was raised a little bit of having the masculinity pushed out of me a little bit. My mm -hmm. dad worked in the oil industry, mm -hmm. so he'd work a week on and week off. Mm -hmm. And my mom and I had a volatile relationship for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And what I saw is that caused me to give away my power and be a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. And as I moved through the world and began to step into my manhood and start mm -hmm. to do the work that I'm called to do in the world, mm -hmm. what began to happen is I began to see that my, my best clients that were getting the best results always seemed to be women that had a knack for communicating, a mm -hmm. knack for speaking, and a knack for leadership. Mm -hmm. And that's really where it all started. I mean, I've had, the, I've had the luxury of working with some of the biggest brands in the world as a branding consultant, mm -hmm. worked with Aflac, Harley Davidson, Porsche, mm -hmm. uh, Marriott International and others, but my favorite has always been working with that, that powerful female that has a vision for mm -hmm. the future and she's struggling with finding her message mm -hmm. or that next million dollar message. Mm -hmm. There's just something that's been magical. And so when my wife and I came together and we started doing this work with Speak Your Path to Cash, mm -hmm. we looked back on it after about four years and literally 87% of our clients were women. And so we decided to start to pivot just into really see, we started seeing where, where women are going and how the world is starting to be in a place that needs to be ruled by women. Mm -hmm. 
And I think the world would be a lot better place if it was. Right, right. You know, and it's interesting. And, and you know, I, I talk a lot, obviously, with my friends and in groups that I am in, you know, that it's, it is a combination, you know, of the masculine and the feminine for both sexes, um, you know, and, and because that there, each one has its strengths. And then of course, obviously each one has its weaknesses. Um, you know, I think one of the, the biggest things that women ha- tend to have more of is empathy. Um, you know, and, and so talk to us about why it's so important for women leaders to, or for leaders uh, to have empathy. Well, I think the biggest, what we're seeing is leadership, even the, the world as we know it was really created by a man, command and control culture. Okay. So that you have mm-hmm. someone at the top who's mm-hmm. in charge, and then there's people underneath the bottom that are designed mm-hmm. to go and implement his vision typically mm-hmm. is the way it's right. been, right? And what we're starting to see is while that created a lot of great infrastructure that built roads and mm-hmm. systems all over the planet and really allowed us to be able to literally literally have a conversation across the world on video, mm-hmm. things of that nature. That is a system that is quickly becoming antiquated because it, it's oppressive mm-hmm. to a lot of mar- marginalized mm-hmm. minorities, women, people of color, mm-hmm. gay, lesbian, mm-hmm. you name it. Okay. And so the world itself is really calling for a different kind of leadership, mm-hmm. a different kind of leadership that embraces all types of people, all mm-hmm. types of beliefs, all types of lifestyles. Mm-hmm. And so with that, it opens itself up to the natural gifts of women. Mm-hmm. I love uh, the work by Alison Armstrong. Mm-hmm. She uh, she talks about the biology of women and the biology of men and how our hormones really serve how we think differently. Mm-hmm. And women have what are called diffused awareness. Mm-hmm. So they have the baby on the hip while they're stirring, while they're stirring the mm-hmm. pot and they're listening mm-hmm. to what's going what, on. What the here. commercial Meanwhile, used to say, bringing home the bacon and cooking it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So they're, you know, they're thinking about what needs to be done at work and they, they've got their mind on all these things. And predominantly that is to care for, to be able to pay attention right. to what's going on with the child and provide protection. Mm-hmm. So a woman is typically paying attention to a lot of things mm-hmm. so that she can exercise her empathy and her intuition. Right. Where a man, his biology is designed to be single focused. So mm-hmm. he literally removes things from his eye, mm-hmm. from what he mm-hmm. sees and his perception Mm -hmm. so that he could focus on producing an outcome, usually the hunt, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so the empathy piece that women bring Mm -hmm. really is a natural gift of her hormones Mm -hmm. and her natural gift of Mm -hmm. her feminine influence. Mm -hmm. And that's where their gift really lies. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And it, it is tricky because, you know, as you mentioned, women are routinely processing multiple things, which can mean we end up with a lack of focus. Um, you know, and, and so that's where it is good to kind of have those combination of things to go, okay, now I, I need to have that one track mind. Um, you know, I need to be focusing on whatever it is and, and, you know, and, and not be, you know, thinking about this, 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 and this now, you know, it might still be there in the fringes, but you know, it is. And, and I think maybe that is one of the, the things that I, especially when I've heard women, you know, talk, they say, you know, focusing is more difficult for us because we are thinking about this, 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 and this. One of the things that we've seen, and I, I want to talk to the, let's talk to those women that really feel like they, they're extremely ambitious. Like okay. they know mm-hmm. that they want to build a big business. Mm-hmm. They want to make a million dollars a year in their business or more. They have a big calling. Mm-hmm. And it's been my experience that women like that typically are often more focused than men. Right. And they can often be more focused. That can also create a problem in their marriage or in their mm-hmm. partnerships right. because the masculine and the feminine has flipped. Mm-hmm. And I think the challenge that comes with that is that the hyper focus often of the woman, my biggest, you know, if I can get really, really vulnerable with you, mm-hmm. my biggest learning that has happened with my wife and I. Mm-hmm. is because we've been both studying the masculine and feminine. We both were in, in graduate school to become mm-hmm. marriage and family therapists. Mm-hmm. We left graduate school to go into entrepreneurship because mm-hmm. we felt we could have a bigger impact there. Mm-hmm. And this is years before we even knew the other person existed, right? Mm-hmm. And as we came together, one, one of the things that I learned around my wife is that as a man, I can go, ah, I'll get to it. That'll work out. Things mm-hmm. are kind of good. And I can kind of just be a little more, mm-hmm. hey, it's all good. Mm-hmm. And what I've learned is the, the importance of women and their need to feel safety. Mm-hmm. 
And every woman has a different threshold of what they need when it comes to safety. Often mm -hmm. this might have to do with any trauma that they experienced mm -hmm. as a child or even as a young adult. Mm -hmm. And so when a man isn't able to produce an energy of safety where the woman can completely surrender, mm -hmm. she will go into her masculine. Mm -hmm. and, and, she becomes and the happens. mama bear. That's correct. And, and it becomes the, her way. Uh, it's her way of being able to feel safe. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I do draw a difference between fierce feminine and masculinity. Mm -hmm. To me, fierce feminine is more the mama bear energy. Mm -hmm. Like I will I will fight mm -hmm. to protect what's mm -hmm. important to me. The masculine is a driving a, a driving piece that okay. I think especially highly highly ambitious women need to be very careful mm -hmm. because she's in man mode. And if she mm -hmm. doesn't know how to turn that off, mm -hmm. it'll start to wreak havoc on thyroid. Mm -hmm. It'll wreak havoc on your right. hormones. Mm -hmm. It leads to depression. So mm -hmm. it really starts to show a woman uh, in her life, her life mm -hmm. circumstances begin mm -hmm. to get really hard to handle. And oftentimes mm -hmm. she's exhausted mm -hmm. and she can't, she can't replenish mm -hmm. because she's just too much in the masculine mm -hmm. and not enough in the feminine where mm -hmm. she can receive. Right. Yeah, because part of the feminine is self-care, um, you know, and, and making sure that we and, and, you know, I think this is, is one of the things that we always have issues with is, you know, we, we sometimes forget that we need to take care of ourselves first. Um, you know, we, we're taking care of everybody else in the world and our own health declines, um, you know, and, and or, you know, our own career declines, all of those various things. And so it is we need to have that combination of, OK, you know, now I'm going to take a breath. I'm, you know, I'm going to take care of myself because by taking care of myself, then I am better able to take care of others. Um, I was talking on an interview um, earlier this month with, with a, a lovely woman. And we were talking about the fact that, you know, a, a great comparison is the, the safety talk on airplanes. You know, when the masks come down, you put yours on first. Um, and then, you know, you, you help those around you. So same thing, you know, we need to, and, and, you know, male, female, you know, whatever, we do need to take care of ourselves first, because then we are better able to take care of others. I agree. I think, I, I do think uh, the, the concept of rigorous self-care mm -hmm. comes to mind. And for those, for those that are listening it's going to be different based on what it is your purpose. Like mm -hmm. as a conscious capitalism consultant, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that we really focus on is the four pillars of impact economy or an impact, social impact mm -hmm. based mm -hmm. you know, using business for good. Mm -hmm. And the first pillar of that is a higher purpose. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, if you have a higher purpose of changing the world, of mm -hmm. fixing uh, what's harming the planet, mm -hmm. of, you know, ending sex trafficking, mm -hmm. of helping the children be educated, if you have a big bold vision that's been mm -hmm. placed inside of you and you can't you can't avoid it mm -hmm. that you're going to have a very different regimen of self-care mm -hmm. than than if it, you that ambition isn't in you and there is no mm -hmm. right or wrong right you know mm -hmm. purpose is your purpose right mm -hmm. but for the women that are really feeling that call that higher purpose mm -hmm. you've got to understand that a little bit of self-care is almost like no self-care. Mm -hmm. It really comes down to that is the com first commitment mm -hmm. when you wake up in the morning and the last commitment before you go to mm -hmm. bed at night and interweaving it throughout mm -hmm. your day. The world is changing. The mm -hmm. world is not responding to the push, the drive like mm -hmm. it used to. Mm -hmm. Now you still need to get, you still need to get things done, right? Mm -hmm. right. But the, the universe is responding to mm -hmm. more of a more of a come to me, an attraction mm -hmm. energy that comes when you're in your vitality, mm -hmm. you're in your joy, especially when women are in their joy and in their pleasure. Mm -hmm. This is when women are attracting mm -hmm. rather than going and getting. Mm -hmm. And I think that can be something that uh, is a, a fundamentally difficult shift mm -hmm. uh, that, that women and men have to come up to is because when, once you realize that what got you here isn't mm -hmm. going to get to where you're going. Mm -hmm. There is a fundamental transformation that is required within who you are. Mm -hmm. And it starts with rigorous self-care. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You know, and as you were, were talking about that, what I thought of was the pandemic. I mean, the pandemic, good and bad, you know, and, and obviously, you know, the, the, we, the, there were many tragedies associated with it. Um, and so, you know, we, we had the pandemic and it forced us, first of all, to stop. I mean, quite literally, we just 
stopped um you know and and so you know and 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 i loved it when they initially said two weeks i thought yeah right um but you know we're and and but but it really made us rethink um not only rethink how you know how we were doing business but everything um you know and i think one of the the most tragic or or cause for concern maybe statistics um, is the number of women that had to completely leave their jobs. And, and for the most part, they did that because their kids were now home. And, and so, you know, they went from, you know, working, owning their own business, being an employee, all of those various things to being a school teacher and really having to, to take care of those kids who were, were at home. Um, you know, and, and, but I think the, the other thing that, that, you know, from the positive side that the pandemic did was, you know, as you said, we, we did have to stop and we rethought and it was like, is this how we want to continue with our lives? Um, you know, and, and I, it's going to be interesting to see how many businesses make major dramatic shifts um, to, as, as we're coming out of this. Yeah, I think one of the things that we're seeing, especially on a corporate level, is just the whole idea that the, the a remote workforce mm -hmm. um, is looking at, I believe it was a McKinsey study that uh, leanin.org mm -hmm. did with them all around uh, women in the workforce. Mm -hmm. And literally, I think 93% of all CEOs mm -hmm. said that they're going to have some kind of right. hybrid model mm -hmm. between work, work from mm -hmm. home and come into work. And as many as something like 80% are like, we're just going to do away with mm -hmm. even coming in. So I mean, right. we're looking at millions of dollars of corporate real estate mm -hmm. that they're spending every year. I, know. That, and, I don't want I, I, you know, I know a corporate a person who does commercial real estate. He's changed jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I would think so too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, we were talking before the, the program when we were just doing our, our chatting before that <clears throat> part of the, the pandemic, I think one of the benefits has been for women leaders because I think many men are more of the hands-on, even micromanaging type of, of, I mean, that to me is a masculine trait. And women were, who were our leaders were dealing with this much better because they were concerned about their employees who were home. More importantly, they, they say, you know what? Hey, Mark, you're getting your job done. I don't care how you do it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you're working at midnight, I don't care, you know, as long as you're doing the, the, you know, and hitting the benchmarks that we need you to hit, <coughs> then it really doesn't matter. And so I think, you know, the, the remote from home, the hybrid working, all of those various things is definitely playing towards more uh, benefiting women leaders. You know, I give you a little bit of put a little bit on that, Deb, because I okay. don't see the micromanagement as so much as a masculine feminine thing. Okay. I feel it's a, I feel it's a it's a leadership style that someone okay. adopts or learns, mm -hmm. and usually micromanagement is a control issue. Now, yes. mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, command and control. Um, mm -hmm. Men use control as a tool. Mm -hmm. They've been taught this in sports mm -hmm. that if they can control the outcome, they can score points. And right. this is one of the things that I love to teach mm -hmm. women is that men are always keeping score. They want to play a game they can win. Mm -hmm. All right. Women aren't thinking that way. So the mm -hmm. man is sitting here, did I score points? Did, mm -hmm. Am I moving the needle towards victory? Mm -hmm. That's everything that we're looking mm -hmm. at, right? And so oftentimes that may mean that control is a tool mm -hmm. that they are using to achieve that outcome. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think for, for women, they may be modeling that because what model of leadership do women have that is not the command and control mm -hmm. model, mm -hmm. right? So this is what's beautiful. If you look at things now, uh, you like uh, I was talking the other day, Friends uh, just had a reunion. Right. Okay, the TV show Friends. That TV show today, if it was pitched, it would be immediately oh. dismissed. Oh, yeah. Ne all, yeah. For a variety of all, reasons. Mm -hmm. That's right. But all white people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. No gays, lesbians, mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. So there's not an array of mm -hmm. what America looks like. Mm -hmm. There's not a representation of what America looks like. So if you're a company and you are not bringing diversity mm -hmm. into your brand, mm -hmm. meaning like on your website, images mm -hmm. of women and mm -hmm. women of color mm -hmm. and gay, lesbian, all those sort mm -hmm. of things, if you're not putting that into play, mm -hmm. you are going to be left behind. Mm -hmm. And I think those are things where women, the inclusivity, mm -hmm. including people, mm -hmm. making sure everybody, this is what's Wait. beautiful because like conscious capitalism, 
The second, the second tenet is stakeholder orientation. Mm -hmm. In 1970, uh, um, I think his name was Milton Fredrickson. Mm -hmm. He wrote an economist, economist, and he wrote an article about the purpose of social impact of companies, social mm -hmm. responsibilities of companies. Mm -hmm. And in that, he said that it is social responsibility is not the responsibility of a company, but the sole purpose of a company is to make its shareholders profit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Since that time, the C what that shifted everything in business. Mm -hmm. Since that time, the CEO salary has gone up over nine hundred percent, while the everyday employee salary has gone up only twelve percent. Right. What this did is this created an atmosphere in business to where it really doesn't matter if we have if we have um, if we have pollution right. going out into mm -hmm. the water. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if we're harming children or we're doing mm -hmm. things that are killing the planet. Mm -hmm. Women won't tolerate that. Right, right. They yeah. won't tolerate. We're, so we're that, not that, win at any cost. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And that 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 that's what the world is craving right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, take for a moment, Devin. I'd like for you to imagine mm -hmm. if every leader of the world, every mm -hmm. country, was was led by a woman. Mm -hmm. Every Fortune 500 company mm -hmm. was led by a woman. Mm -hmm. You brought them all together in a room. It would probably only be about 3,000 3, women, mm -hmm. probably less. Mm -hmm. And what would what would be the things that they would talk about compared if you brought all the men leaders mm -hmm. into a room mm -hmm. and had a conversation? Mm -hmm. Our world our world is going to be completely different mm -hmm. when, when women are in leadership roles. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be the leader of the nation. It can be the leader of whatever is going mm -hmm. on in your community. Mm -hmm. But as a woman steps into leadership, when as a woman seeks leadership, mm -hmm. as she says, you know what? I can be a leader. I can do it differently. I can bring mm -hmm. heart. I can bring intuition. I can bring inclusion. Mm -hmm. I can bring I can bring, bring love mm -hmm. into the equation. I'm going to be able to still produce mm -hmm. a result right. that generates millions mm -hmm. of dollars of profit. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be able to create the kind of world that people mm -hmm. want to belong to. So we need women seeking the skills mm -hmm the attitudes, the energies, the influence mm -hmm. skills and tools mm -hmm. that allow her to use her gifts to create this kind of world. Right. You know, and and when we start thinking from a corporate perspective of adding those things, and, and of course there are companies that have done that all along, but you know, it's it is more attractive first to their employees and potential employees to be able to say, "Hey, we do this, 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 and this for our environment." Um, every every third Thursday, you get a paid day off to go volunteer. I mean, you know, all sorts of things. You know, the, the it's it is it's attractive to your employees, and obviously, it depends on industry. I mean, you know, a big company can't shut down an assembly line for a day. I mean, you know, right. all sorts of things, but. Um, um, you know, it is it is something that is attractive, and then it it is attractive to the shareholders, and because the shareholders, you know, ultimately are going to get more money, um, but right. it's also attractive to the consumers. And as much as we make faces and go ew at millennials, that really is one of the things that millennials are are looking for is you know things like that. And anytime somebody goes yeah about a millennial, I I remind them you know, you raised them. <laughs> you know, they have those values and are looking for those things because you raised them. Um, you know, for those of us that are at the, at the end of the hippie generation, um, you know, we, we really did think a lot about, you know, what is our impact? What are, what are we leaving for future gen generations? Um, you know, and, and, and you're right. I mean, that, that is a, a very feminine thought process because we are so nurturing, you know, we're thinking about, you know, in a hundred years, what's going to happen as right. opposed to, you know, the masculine thought of how much money can I make today? Right. right. Yeah. And what's really fascinating to me is when you look at the millennials and even the, the Gen Xers and, mm -hmm. uh, and all of them, the money from the baby boomers, there's mm -hmm. literally going to be a transfer mm -hmm. of trillions mm -hmm. of dollars. Right. Huge amounts. Mm -hmm. Okay. And millennials, they will not do business with people that are harming the planet. Mm -hmm. They will not do business in that way. So mm -hmm. right now you're seeing a lot of these uh, portfolio managers mm -hmm. jumping through hoops and they're starting mm -hmm. to move into what is called impact investing, mm -hmm. which are organizations that only are doing sustainability mm -hmm. investments. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the, and, and then there's this whole B corporation that's coming up, mm -hmm. which 
corporations have a score on how they're governed, their mm-hmm. their environmental their environmental impact, and their ability to generate mm-hmm. revenue. Right. So this is the new business model, mm-hmm. and this is what I want women listening to really get, and men too. Mm-hmm. This is the new business mm-hmm. model. So if right. you are not shifting and thinking in this way, if you are not mm-hmm. investing in women, even more so than Bitcoin, mm-hmm. if you're not investing in their skills, if mm-hmm. you're not investing in their ability to rise, if you're not investing in your own ability to connect and, and manage and support and mm-hmm. you know elevate mm-hmm. women, and unleash the feminine in your mm-hmm. own heart, you will mm-hmm. be left behind. Right. And what I see in this is really the world we're meant to be a part of. I mean, mm-hmm. we've created something amazing on this planet. Mm-hmm. We have roads and technology and entertainment and the world is, it, we're living a fantasy to what mm-hmm. people thought we could be doing mm-hmm. like, uh, just a hundred years ago. Mm-hmm. And 500 years ago, the things that we do right on this little phone mm-hmm. feels like magic. Oh, I and, know. Well, so, 20 years ago, I mean, what we could do. Right. I mean, who would have thought you know, right. that, that you could really talk into place. your watch, right? <laughs> That's right. You know, and we're really at a place where now is the time to look at the what the muscle it took to build these systems in this structure is not the muscle that, that's going to allow people to right. prosper mm-hmm. in that in that in that model. So we have it seems like the, the haves and the have nots mm-hmm. is getting further and further mm-hmm. apart. Yes. And so we need to flip that mm-hmm. so that everybody's prospering, mm-hmm. everybody's being able to be taken care of. And this means that we now need to go back and reevaluate and mm-hmm. redo the infrastructure mm-hmm. uh, because the infrastructure itself, need, the diamond needs polishing. Mm-hmm. And this is where women are going to really bring in both coming mm-hmm. into city planning and smart cities, mm-hmm. all the things that we're doing, energy. Mm-hmm. There is so much opportunity mm-hmm. to be able to generate wealth and mm-hmm. income and change and mm-hmm. impact. Uh, I'm thrilled that women can be leading the leading the leading the path. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and and we're not saying that people aren't going to be making money and being wealthy. Um, but when you do it the right way, you can do good and make money. I mean, you know, that right. that's the thing. Um, but but yeah, I mean, you know, and, and I think that is one of the things that we definitely saw with the pandemic is the haves and have nots. Um, just right. education, you know, from from a, an education perspective is, is probably right. one of the things with how many children did not have the right equipment and the right resources to be able to be homeschooled. Um, you know, whether they didn't have computers, whether they didn't have Wi-Fi, you know, all sorts of things like that. Not to mention, you know, it was it was a challenge for many of their parents to all of a sudden be at least helping with homework um, and, you know, and, and some things like that. And, and I think that is something that is probably going to really come out of this pandemic is, is companies, and, you know, and yes, they're going to make money doing it, but, you know, they're going to figure out, okay, how do we get 5G, 4G, whatever G to everybody, um, right. and not just in cities, in rural communities. Um, you know, it's it's funny. I grew up in a very small mountain town in in Colorado, and I was in eighth grade, so this was a long time ago. Um, and they were were doing some infrastructure change for the whole county, and they brought high speed cable in but I mean, we didn't even know what it was and but we were one of the first places that had that because they had the foresight to go well hey while we're doing this let's do this um you know and and so it's it's interesting to see how you know how places are doing that um you know one of the things that we saw here in in georgia with during the pandemic i live in in cobb county so there's cobb county school district many kids did not have internet access. And so what they did, and I just thought this was the coolest thing in the world, they equipped the school buses as Wi-Fi hotspots, basically. And and then the school bus would drive to a low income area. Of course, everybody had the passwords. And so it wasn't just, you know, people, you know, kids that were doing it, you know, everybody tied into the internet, but, you know, they, there was Wi-Fi. And they also were still providing the free lunch program out of there, you know, because most of those kids were the kids who participated in free lunch. The school bus drivers were still doing, you know, still employed. The people fixing the lunches were still employed. So, you know, it was this big process Fantastic. where they kept a lot of people um, happy, as happy as you could be during during the pandemic. Um, you know, I am a firm believer that kids especially need the socialization of attending school 
at least yeah. part of the time. But um, but yeah, I mean, I thought that was a very innovative way to, to be able to use their resources to help as much as they could. Um, you know, it, it didn't really address the kids that didn't have computers and things like that, but it, it at least got people a little bit closer. Right. I think you I think you said even something that that COVID, it's like it it shined a light. Mm -hmm. It shined mm -hmm. a light. Yeah. Um, on something that I think was really, really important, mm -hmm. you know, after with the pandemic, we started seeing the shortages of our kids, our kids and what it takes to educate them. Mm -hmm. But I think we forget that the teachers have been experiencing that all along. Right. Mm -hmm. The teachers were having to go and buy supplies mm -hmm. for their mm -hmm. students, for their own classrooms. Mm -hmm. We should not, we're, we're the United States of America. Yeah, living in the yeah. teachers century. should not That's be ridiculous. having to spend their own money to buy crayons. No. no, they should not. And so these are the kind of things that will go continue to be unaddressed in the world we live in now. Mm -hmm. So the impact economy is that shift to where everything we do, we see the impact so that it elevates people and allows them to get educated and mm -hmm. have the resources they need to thrive. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's no reason, you know, so what we're going to see, I think we're going to see a complete restructuring mm -hmm. of the education system. Mm -hmm. Here's mm -hmm. the challenge, Deb, is that there is, there is this, we have two things going on. We have this, this need that's coming up for a different way of living, working, and being mm -hmm. on the planet. Mm -hmm. And then we have billions of dollars being generated by doing it the way we're doing it now. Mm -hmm. Right. So People there is like, this, they don't like change and they like doing it the way we've always done it. Well, I, you know, I think that they, they don't have a problem changing when they see, oh, I can make more money if I mm -hmm. change. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but when that certainty isn't there, they would rather dig in and continue to mm -hmm. do things as we've done them, whether mm -hmm. it's our political structure, mm -hmm. our economic structure, our social structures. Mm -hmm. So there has to be voices. Mm -hmm. There has to be voices uh, that there's a better way. Mm -hmm. And this is where Big Impact HQ really shines is mm -hmm. helping women find that voice. Ladies, right. mm -hmm. you have a story to tell. Mm -hmm. And whether it's a, you know, a tragedy to triumph story where mm -hmm. maybe you were oppressed or mm -hmm. abused or you had something horrible happen to mm -hmm. you, you don't have to have that to have a great story to tell mm -hmm. and something to share. Right. And your ability to share it powerfully mm -hmm. and persuasively is mm -hmm. what leads change. Mm -hmm. yes. Everything starts with the power mm -hmm. of words mm -hmm. and the words you choose. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, you know, and it doesn't important. matter if it's a group of five or a group of 5,000, you know, right. it's, it's sharing that story because it spreads, you know, it, the, the, the five share it, the 5,000 share it. I mean, you know, that's, that's where that comes in is, you know, and, and so for the women who just went ah! at thinking about speaking in big groups, you know what, volunteer at, at your church, you know, mentor girls. I mean, all these various things, you know, there's so many ways that, that you can get involved to, you know, to, to, to start that, that message and that, that movement. So often when, so often when people have a reaction around speaking, they think they might have a fear of speaking. Mm -hmm. And it's really, it's really been amazing that my wife and I have been uh, doing this together with Big Impact since 2013. Mm -hmm. We've had over 3,000 women come to our live mm -hmm. events. We've seen over and over again, um, especially when you have a calling, mm -hmm. especially when there's something deep inside that you want to you mm -hmm. that you want to say and you're not sure how to say it. Mm -hmm. It can be extremely difficult to take the stage in your life, mm -hmm. whether it's in front of one person, a few, or many. And to speak your truth. And what mm -hmm. we've seen is that when you're given an opportunity to have uh, a cocoon of safety, an environment of safety, mm -hmm. and have someone who, you know, have, puts their hand on your shoulder, mm -hmm. looks over your shoulder, guides you, leads you, and supports mm -hmm. you, speaking heals. Mm -hmm. When you are able to start to speak and articulate a message and tell mm -hmm. your story, you become empowered mm -hmm. and you overcome the things that are keeping you small mm -hmm. and the things that are keeping you being a people mm -hmm. pleaser. We've got to rise above our conditioning. And mm -hmm. that's what we see over and over again that women are coming to us with is that they're like, I have all these skills, skills and all these tools to be a leader, but I don't know how I, what's fundamentally happening is inside my mind, the words and phrases that are going around is that I'm not enough. Mm -hmm. I find myself constantly trying to please people. Mm -hmm. I find myself not wanting to upset people. Mm -hmm. And so they're being bent into a pretzel to make people mm -hmm. happy. And meanwhile, they're overlooking the power of who they are. Right. Speaking right. helps you elevate and find mm -hmm. that power. 
Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And for women, especially, we just see them get uh, to just elevate their life mm -hmm. when they find the courage to just step mm -hmm. in and start to learn. Right. You know, and, and one of the things that has, has made, you know, especially dramatic changes in the last year is obviously technology, um, you know, where we can be at home. I, I tell people, you know, I love this new world. I never have to put shoes on, um, you know, and, and but we can be giving our message in a very safe environment. Um, you know, now there are speakers and, and you know, the, the professional speakers that, that I know that, you know, have not been able to speak in the last year. I mean, we feed on the energy from a crowd. I mean, you know, that is, is just part of it. But, you know, to also be able to do a Facebook Live, a Zoom, a LinkedIn Live, you know, even just recording and then putting the message out there, you know, all of those various things. Technology has made this easier um, for, for people to be able to do things. Um, you know, and, and, you know, speaking of tech, I, I love this, you know, you were showing me and we've, you've done it a little bit during the program. So, you know, if you're just listening, you miss out on this, you have three different cameras. And, and so you're able to show, you know, it's not just you, the talking head, you've got, you know, what you're showing now is, is uh, a much more depth of field, you know, you, I can see your computer, I can see much more of your room. Um, and then you've got two different angles on yourself from a closer, uh, cam from closer cameras. And I love that because it, it just gives variety. I mean, you know, we, the, the talking head gets a little bit boring after a while, um, you know, and, and we see that obviously with newscasts, they are always moving the cameras around. And that was a challenge when all of a sudden the newscasters were at home you know, right. because they couldn't do that. Um, but, but yeah, you know, it's, it just takes a little bit of effort to make things more interesting but again, you know, this is technology is allowing us to get our messaging out there in ways that two years ago, we never even would have dreamed of. That's right. I think it's really important for, uh, you touched on it really powerfully, Deb, because there's a, there's a section of the brain called, called BROCA. Mm -hmm. And BROCA's job is to survey the horizon for what is predictable mm -hmm. and irrelevant. Right. And it's it serves us because if every time we saw a door, we had to figure out how to turn a knob and open the door, mm -hmm. our life would always be in, in, in trying to figure out things. So the, the, the brain works in what is known as generalization. So it mm -hmm. sees a door and it goes, oh, I know what that is. Yes. And without even thinking about it, we're able to turn the knob, open it, move through, and just mm -hmm. we're not even thinking about it. So when it comes to marketing and messaging, mm -hmm. a lot of people think that the deployment of the message is what's important mm -hmm. and it has its place, but it's the potency of the message that really matters. Mm -hmm. Being able to articulate your message. We have a program called Online Speaking Made Simple so that the technology piece is simplified. Mm -hmm. uh, being able to get your message out there, to be able to put it on video, to do the things to market your services. Mm -hmm. And we also want to be able to show you how to communicate with salience, with potency, understanding how to articulate a message so that people lean in, right. tune in, and mm -hmm. get turned on. Mm -hmm. When you have that skill set, you can deal with the changes of technology because ultimately your ability to communicate stays strong. And mm -hmm. this is the skill of a leader. Mm -hmm. Leaders know how to communicate. They know how to bring people in. They know how to inspire. They can take people from tears to cheers mm -hmm. and they can show them how to transform their life. Words matter and your mm -hmm. ability to articulate them with people and more importantly, to articulate them in your own mind mm -hmm. in a new way is what leads to the change that allows your mm -hmm. message to land. Right. And if the women and the listeners can take that away from them today, mm -hmm. they're gonna have a different trajectory that allows them to look back years mm -hmm. from now and go, you know what? In that moment, I really decided to take my mm -hmm. communication by my hand, by the hand and mm -hmm. really lead me somewhere mm -hmm. with it. Right, right. I'm gonna have to check out your program. This sounds very interesting. Um, but but yeah, it's you know, it, it is it does take some work and some practice. Um, you know, it's it's it with anything, it, you know, uh, my first podcast, oh, I listen to them, I'm like, oh no, <laughs> but I also do not delete them because they they were important. I mean, you know, I had and more importantly, it's because the guests, you know, I don't want to, uh, you know, I was talking to people that were that had great information and great knowledge. So I don't want to delete that. But 
we all get better with practice. Doesn't matter what it is, um, you know, and, and, uh, but, but it's, and, and it takes time. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, we, we get impatient with is we want to be that perfect presenter, that perfect, whatever the first time that is not going to happen, you know? And, and so that's yeah. where it really helps to be able to work with experts like, like you and your wife to, to kind of work through those bugs because you've seen the bugs, you know, and, and, you know, and, and so, you know, why, why am I trying to figure it out if I can work with somebody who knows how to deal with it? Absolutely. Well, we have a, we have a, uh, like a two or three day training called, uh, speaker skill drills. And what we do is throughout the, throughout the weekend, you're just rehearsing over and over again, mm -hmm. things like the pause, right? Just little things, vocal mm -hmm. variety, being able mm -hmm. to change your volume mm -hmm. or with a whisper, mm -hmm. these things pull your crowd in. And when you can begin to make those a habit, mm -hmm. a part of your communication mm -hmm. toolbox, you become someone who's in demand. Mm -hmm. You become someone who's listened to, someone who's respected. And so there's a certain arc in your talk where you mm -hmm. have to know the storyline and you have to bring in things like entertainment mm -hmm. and influence and mm -hmm. impact and comedy and the things that people are used to seeing because we are in a world of entertainment. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about the news. If you watch, you watch any more of a, a, a commercial on television they will have a frame change just about every five seconds. Right, which is so, what I mean, you just did. I love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Constantly in change all the time because as soon as you make that change, mm -hmm. then broke is back in it. It's starting mm -hmm. to go, oh, isn't that interesting? Right. And it's keeping the person engaged. Mm -hmm. So in a lot of ways, social media and all these things, it's, it, this mm -hmm. I feel is kind of conducive to why there's so much mm -hmm. ADD in the world mm -hmm. is that we have really been training through technology mm -hmm training our brains mm -hmm. to not be able to focus. Right. We and get bored we quickly. We get bored very easily because we, and yet when you look at it, we have more stimulus than we can mm -hmm. imagine. One of the best things that we can do, my wife and I like to do this. If we can, we like to do it once a month. It's really mm -hmm. more than once, more like once a quarter, but mm -hmm. a whole week of a digital detox. Mm -hmm. So no screens, mm -hmm. no technology, nothing for a week. Mm -hmm. And the first three days, it's kind of... <laughs> Right. The world is going to you know, stop you know, and I'm not going to know. You know mm -hmm. That's right. And yet, and yet then you start, you know, you go for a walk in nature or you just start to listen to the sounds and you hear, you hear what your body's doing. You feel things, you, you reconnect mm -hmm. with the power of mother nature, mm -hmm. which to me is God. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're reconnecting to the th things that really matter and you're unplugging from the matrix. Mm -hmm. It's really important for us to remember that, that while we have these great tools that allow us to reach across the world and to have these interactions, the best thing you can do for your soul is to turn mm -hmm. those things off and get right. belly to belly in mm -hmm. community, in nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and, and I mean, some of it is, is simple. You know, you, you might not be able to detox for, you know, even a day, depending on, on what you do, right. especially if you've got like kids, you know, and, and, and things, but an hour. A half an hour. I mean, you know, go sit out on your deck with a glass of your favorite beverage and leave your phone inside. You know, right. in a half an hour, the world will not stop. And even if something happens in a half an hour, you can get caught back up, um, you know, and, and things like that. But, you know, it, it really and is. Dad, have you by chance watched the uh, documentary called Social Dilemma? I have not, but I need to. It's it's on my list. Yeah, I would encourage mm -hmm. everyone to watch that. It is mm -hmm. a disturbing uh, awakening mm -hmm. on how technology is shaping who we're being mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. And the biggest challenge is, is one of the best things that you and I could do would be mm -hmm. to switch phones. Mm -hmm. And because the feed that mm -hmm. you are getting Mm -hmm. is going to be dramatically different than the feed that I'm mm -hmm. getting. Right. And so as you start to do searches mm -hmm. and you click a like or you mm -hmm. watch something mm -hmm. or you listen to something and you select something, mm -hmm. all of those moves are determining what shows up next mm -hmm. in your search. Yep. So you and I can mm -hmm. have the exact same search terms mm -hmm. and you are going to get a biased, mm -hmm. skewed view mm -hmm. of the world right. based on your previous mm -hmm. searches. Mm -hmm. And so will I. And we must understand that mm -hmm. these are ways that we are being influenced. Mm -hmm. Right. We are being influenced by powers mm -hmm. unseen. Mm -hmm. And we have to, and one of the best things for you as mm -hmm. you're learning influence is to understand how you are being influenced. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Know what to do so that you can choose as opposed to think you're choosing. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Uh, so I encourage everyone, please take a moment to watch The Social mm -hmm. Dilemma. Mm -hmm. It'll be an awakening to, uh, mm -hmm. to the work that you're doing mm -hmm. in the world, be that a parent or uh, you know a politician, mm -hmm. Uh, or whether you're here to change mm -hmm. the world with the business that you run. Right, right. I mean, you know, just just look at, say, Facebook. You know, I will do a certain, and this always, you know, it, it's convenient and annoying and scary all at the same time. You know, I'll do a search on my phone for something. And then I log into Facebook on my computer. So totally different critters. And ads for whatever I had searched for on my phone start showing up in Facebook. Now, wow. like I said, sometimes that's convenient. You know, I don't have to spend all my time trying to find, you know, a, a, a vacation home on Tybee Island. They just start appearing on Facebook. But at the same point, it's scary. Um, you know, and, and I think that's something that, you know, we all do need to keep in mind, you know, turn, turn off the tracking things when you can on your phones, um, you know, all of those various things. And, and get back to using your brain. You know, I think we, we have gotten lazy. It's like, okay, well, I'm just going to search for X term and, and let the cookies on my machine show up what I want. Or, or right. as you said, we're not understanding that the cookies on my machine are showing the, the things. Right. And, and so we're getting a skewed version of things. Right. In the world of AI, uh, artificial mm -hmm. intelligence, we're not far away from where we walk around. You know, we come off the mm -hmm. plane. Uh, we come off the plane into an airport and you come around the corner and mm -hmm. this laser person right. pops up and says, mm -hmm. hi, Mark, I can tell you're hungry. Would you like some Chipotle? It's mm -hmm. right around the corner. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's able to know all the choices mm -hmm. that I right. made previously. Mm -hmm. It's going to know my name. It's mm -hmm. going to know all these things about mm -hmm. me. Now, for some people, they're like, what a great world mm -hmm. to be a part of. Oh, and yeah. Others, mm -hmm. like, I'm a little reluctant mm -hmm. for that much knowledge about me mm -hmm. to be available at the fingertips mm -hmm. of the mask. Right. Right. So yeah. this is this is the wonder mm -hmm. that we're in right mm -hmm. now, and we need the voices of women mm -hmm. because most most people associate technology and mm -hmm. computer programming with men. Right, and, and so the women are going to go. Wait a minute. <laughs> right, and women in technology, huge, mm -hmm. huge. Women in finance, huge. Mm -hmm. We want to start to put. We want to start to replace the women leaders mm -hmm. in male dominated or uh, male dominated industries so that we can have a different way that the, the future will unfold. Right. You know, and, and I mentioned what would earlier- that mean to you? What would that mean to you, Deb, to have a world that is has more women in the world? How do you oh, think it I'd, would be- Oh, I'd love it. Um, you know, and, and because, I, you know, I think more than anything, we just need that we need more women speaking um, so that we have their their viewpoint. Um, you know, it's it's in, I just watched a very interesting program. It was on PBS. It was called Atlantic Crossing. And it was an eight part series. And it was about it, kind of some of the events of, of World War Two. I mean, that was was when it was set in. But it was about one very powerful woman. And, and it was somebody that, you know, most of us, I am guessing, would have never heard of. Um, it was about the crown princess of Norway and what she had to deal with um, during World War II. Um, she ended up making friends with uh, the Roosevelts. And, you know, and, and so we got to see Eleanor Roosevelt and how powerful she was and the role that she had to take, um, you know, and, and some things like this. But the whole purpose of the show was to show that women, women are powerful, um, you know, and unfortunately it also, you know, highlighted the fact that many times they're completely unsung, you know, she, right. you know, the, the crown princess did some really good things and her husband got credit, right. um, you know, and, and now, you know, of course it was dramatized for the, the program and things, but um, you know, or, or even, you know, Eleanor Roosevelt, I mean, she was probably one of the most powerful women in the world that most people never even knew. I mean, you know, they knew she existed and, but she only now granted she, um, you know, she just had that personality, but it also, you know, she had to do things because FDR couldn't, um, right. you know, and, right. and so, you know, he was, and they, they, you know, we've, we've all kind of seen this where um, we've, we've heard about it where she was his eyes and his, his ears. I mean, you know, she was able to go out in the world, but, you know, it, it's still, you know, we, we think of him and then like, oh right. yeah, he was married to, to that lady, um, right. you know, and, what was, and the name of that what was the name of that it's called story? Atlantic crossing because they were going back and forth across the Atlantic, um, nice. is, is my assumption, but it, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was a great PBS series. Um, and I had a lot of fun looking up, okay, was this fact, was this fiction, was it a combination of, and, and, you know, in, in many cases it was a combination of, but, 
But yeah, I mean, it, it showed a lot of how, especially how women had more empathy, how, you know, they were thinking, okay, there is this situation. How do we solve it in a way that, that you know, going forward, it, it, things are, are different. You know, it's not just let's win this battle. It's what happens after the war when we win that battle, um, you know, and, and right. I think we see that with women, you know, okay, well, if we have this product, if we have this service, if we do this, whatever, what, what is going to be the outcome? Um, you know, what happens further on down? And, and um, you know, a, again, we're not saying, you know, that it's masculine or feminine. It is that combination, um, you know, and, and it is tricky for women. You know, I've, I've had several guests on recently where we've talked about the imposter syndrome, where we as women subconsciously or consciously think we have to be like men. Um, you know, the, the, the business power suits would probably be one of the best examples of that is, you know, we think as, as a woman, we have to wear a suit in, in order to, to kind of be thought of as, you know, and, and I, tell you, I don't own a suit. I do not own any suits. Now, granted, I'm not networking right now or going out, but, um, you know, we do things that as women where we're trying to make ourselves be more like men. And that's, you know, that is not what we want to be doing. And then you have the power suit pose, right? Oh, yes, yes. Or hands on <laughs> hips. I like the hands on hips. You know, I'm like, right. uh, I don't stand I like you, that. I think you said something really powerfully there that, you know, you, you step into that role um, out of kind of a, out of default. And that's one of the mm -hmm. things that I think is really important when you are, when you are getting, when you choose to invest in your skills mm -hmm. as a woman leader, make sure that you are investing in a way to where there is some kind of inner game work, mm -hmm. you must undo the old part of the old mm -hmm. self, right. or you're just putting new skills and tools mm -hmm. on a, on a, a, on top mm -hmm. of a of a platform that's not really you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so one of the things that we're really big on is your authentic self-expression. Mm -hmm. Now, as a woman who is an entrepreneur, you have a lot of choice on what you're going to wear, how you're going to move through the world. Mm -hmm. When you are in a corporation, mm -hmm. you are judged if your right. shirt, if your if your dress is a little mm -hmm. too short or mm -hmm. a little too colorful. Mm -hmm. You know, usually suits are navy mm -hmm. or black right. or brown, mm -hmm. and these are like the staple colors. And if you go beyond that, then you're out of the norm, and right. you can be judged and evaluated. And that, you know, and there's such a different atmosphere in the corporate world than there was than there is in the entrepreneur world. Right. Uh, and so, understanding the role that you play in awakening the planet mm -hmm. and understanding how you can choose mm -hmm. to wear what you're, you're wearing something in by intention mm -hmm. to influence and impact the situation mm -hmm. so that it's in your favor. Mm -hmm. And when you can be in that role, you're in your power. And mm -hmm. that's what we to stand for. Right. You know, and, and again, I think that post pandemic is really going to be beneficial to that because we're not in the offices. We're, um, you know, doing all sorts of things that are obviously not what we've been doing. I, I love the people who keep saying, I can't wait for things to get back to normal. Not going to happen, folks. Um, you know, even if we got to true herd immunity, all those various things, people like working from home. Companies liked not having to pay all of those expenses for space for, you know, even they might still have that space, but, you know, there's they're, they're not having to pay for electricity or, you know, as much electricity, I mean, all those various things. And so, you know, I think this is obviously beneficial going forward. We're, we're going to see things make some, some pretty dramatic shifts on how companies really operate. Absolutely. Uh, you know what, I was talking to you about conscious capitalism, which is really the brainchild of John Mackey. Mm -hmm. He is the CEO of Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. And so with that, I mean, you've got companies like Southwest Airlines mm -hmm. and uh, Patagonia and a lot of companies that are forming the board of conscious capitalism. And this is truly a movement. Mm -hmm. uh, the four tenets uh, really quickly are higher purpose, stakeholder orientation, moving from just shareholder orientation to mm -hmm. stakeholder orientation. Then the next one is conscious leadership, mm -hmm. being aware of yourself as a leader and being a heart-centered servant leader, leading differently, mm -hmm. and then ultimately a conscious culture. Mm -hmm. And when you look at those tenets and the way that they operate, this is a fantastic business model, whether you are a small business mm -hmm. or a corporation where women can step into the, a role and create massive transformation in their organization through these four tenets. Mm -hmm. And you're going to find, ladies, that these really 
connect with who you are as a woman. It doesn't feel like it's a man's world being put on you mm -hmm. and you're having to operate in that. It really is a place for your self-expression, your genius, your creativity to be put on showcase to change people's lives. Right, right. And then, you know, when we combine that with the the men and the powerful men, that's where it really gets successful, um, you know, because Absolutely. it's it, it is something, you know, that that I think I think, and I think that is is, you know, one of the things that that excites me the most about this is the combination is what will really make us be successful, um, whether it's personal, whether it's volunteer, whether it's your business, all of those various things you know, that, that is where we're going to see people really, really making leaps and bounds. Oh, Deb, I love the way you said that. Yeah, it is the flow mm -hmm. of the masculine and feminine. It's in all of us. Mm -hmm. We need to find our own natural rhythm with that mm -hmm. and learn how to live that. Mm -hmm. The challenge is, is so much of our, our background, our wounds, mm -hmm. our trauma, which is millions of us are suffering from trauma mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and oftentimes we don't even know it and it's mm -hmm. showing up for us right now the universe is saying let's pull these patterns out of you let's pull these out of you so that you can find that natural rhythm and flow of your own masculine your own feminine mm -hmm. in a way that works and right. then when you can work together and knowing okay now i'm going to be in my feminine now i'm going to be in my masculine and you use those mm -hmm. roles to work together right. now we have a planet in which everybody can right Right. You know, and, and it's just as important for men to be doing this too, because, Absolutely. you know, we want men to be more empathetic. We want them to be thinking more about the environment, all of those things. I mean, so that's where it, it is just that combination of, of everything. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, I have a men's circle. Uh, there's 15 of us men get together a couple of times a month. Mm -hmm. We'll, uh, once we'll have like a gentleman's, uh, gentleman's social. And then we also get around a fire once a month for, for just primal connection. <laughs> and uh, you, <laughs> women could witness, if women could witness men revealing their heart, mm -hmm. uh, what these men stand for, I think that women would see uh, we have so much hope about the, what the world is bringing and the role that men want right. to play. These are conscious, evolved men mm -hmm. that have been doing the inner work and they come together with other men to explore parts of their psyche and their soul that they can't do anywhere else. And it's right. the most beautiful work that I have mm -hmm. seen. You know, I've been doing professional development work, personal transformation work, breakthrough work with thousands of clients and with myself mm -hmm. for, for 20 plus years. And to see this culmination happening with men, mm -hmm. women are coming together all over the planet mm -hmm. uh, in connection and in, mm -hmm. in tribe and in community. And they're they're learning and growing. And men are just starting to see mm -hmm. that they need this too. They right. need that place to land with other men, mm -hmm. not just a way of just coming together and you know watching a football game and cheering the beer and 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 having fun, mm -hmm. but finding a place to where they can look at another man in the eye and tell him, "I love you, brother." Right. And to feel mm -hmm. to feel a connection and mm -hmm. to hug and to mm -hmm. drop into the heart and the sorrow mm -hmm. of some of the things that have happened in their lives. Right. When we do this mm -hmm. work, mm -hmm. now our businesses are better. Mm -hmm. And right. that's what we're our stand for right. in the world. And that's mm -hmm. what we want people to be a stand for right. is to use your business mm -hmm. for the transformation that the world needs. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh my gosh. Holy schmoly. You know, this, this is why I set a timer because we could, could go on forever about this. Um, yeah, you, let's do it. I know, I know. Yes. Well, <laughs> what we'll do is we'll, we'll have you on again. I mean, you know, this is, is fascinating. Oh, and I, I you think know, we should, uh, we should introduce you to my wife, Deb. She oh would yes, be a great most guest definitely. Guest because I'm, very, I'm sure she is, yeah, yeah, she is, she is wonderful. I'm sure. But you've talked a little bit about the programs and services that you offer, but tell us how people find you and connect with you and, and a little bit more about Big Impact HQ. Thank you for that. So Big Impact HQ has been specifically designed for women who want more impact, income, and influence, and you love speaking. Mm -hmm. Whether you're just beginning to speak or you're feeling that call to speak, mm -hmm. or maybe you are on your path or already achieved a million dollar a year in your business mm -hmm. and you're looking for that next level that next level million dollar message. You need branding, you need messaging, mm -hmm. you need mm -hmm. business acumen. And that is what we've created Big Impact University okay. for. Uh, and Big Impact HQ is a big part of that. So you can mm -hmm. head on over to bigimpacthq.com mm -hmm. to learn more about what we stand for and what mm -hmm. our businesses are for. 
And if you'd like to move the needle in your own world mm -hmm. as a communicator, leader, and speaker, mm -hmm. I'd encourage you to go to the speaker blueprints. That's with an S speaker mm -hmm. And you could take our speaker assessment there ah. and it's going to show you what kind of speaker you are. Mm -hmm. It'll show you whether you're a motivator or an activist and mm -hmm. uh, a, uh, pre uh, a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a presenter. Mm -hmm. there, there's six different ones there and they're mm -hmm. wonderful because it's going to show you what you're doing well. It'll mm -hmm. show you some areas of improvement. And then you begin to borrow from the six different types of speakers to become a world-class communicator mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that can turn 10 minutes of stage time into $10,000 plus. Cool. Cool. I love it. You know, and, and again, for people who just totally freaked out about, oh my God, hey, small groups are fine too. You know, you can have a Absolutely. big impact in a very small group, um, you know, and, 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 you know, and, and we want people to, you know, to be comfortable sharing their stories, you know, and, and, and a lot of times that's showing the vulnerability and that's okay, male or female, it's okay to be showing that. Absolutely. I think, in fact, vulnerability, Brene mm -hmm. Brown is doing such fantastic mm -hmm. yes. work on that mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And when you understand the role of credibility mm -hmm. and vulnerability, we call it the credibility vulnerability ratio. Mm -hmm. So as a speaker, you have to, you, you're, you're an authority. Mm -hmm. You have to know how to position your authority. And that can mm -hmm. be challenging because women have been taught not to brag. Mm -hmm. So you have to overcome your right. old That's programming. not ladylike. That's mm -hmm. not ladylike. So you have to overcome your old programming and understand mm -hmm. that you are, you are in charge of your destiny. Mm -hmm. And you can pay attention on when you need to level in your credibility, mm -hmm. when to drop into vulnerability so that mm -hmm. people feel you and trust you. Mm -hmm. Right. I love it. I love it. Well, again, it's bigimpacthq.com. Real easy to, to find. Um, you're on, on LinkedIn. And so, you know, people can connect with you that way. What final thoughts do you have for everyone? My final thought is that not to take life so seriously. You know, we're here to, you know, life is a wonderful gift. And mm -hmm. so find the joy and wonder in deep sorrow, mm -hmm. find the joy and wonder in the highs of connecting with your, with your child or your animal or your pet or your spouse, make life an adventure mm -hmm. and not get, and just not be so damn serious about things all the time. I love it. I love it. Well, I have been having an absolutely delightful conversation with Mark Granger of Big Impact HQ. I'm Deb Creer. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.